chicken wing it, bro. Chicken wing it? What the fuck is that? Get them some of them spicy hot wings. Oh, man. I'm feeling some KFC right now. Oh, that'd be the dream. Post lockdown. <laughs> hey. Hey, hey, the Hello. directory's open. Hello. Hello. Welcome back to the Portfolio Podcast. Hello. I'm Ryan. This is Hanny. For those of you returning, the eight plus subscribers we had last week, thank you very much. Very much yes. appreciated. For those of you that haven't subscribed, why not? It's free. It's a button. Push it. In fact, there's lots of buttons down there just to push all of them. I don't know what half of them do, so... <laughs> We go from there anyway. Um, yeah, so it's time for our weekly portfolio update. Yeah, yeah my numbers are a lot larger than last time. Not because of profits, but because of Shh, more. You're not supposed to tell them that. <laughs> all, oh, all, all because of profits, all, all gains, 100% gains. gains. All because of gains. Yeah, Hanny's back in his hometown. He's back where he should be. So <laughs> he's on his normal setup. And um, we've got a hopefully a slightly more topical video to go through this time. So, but yeah. How's this week been for you anyway? Obviously, you've, you've had your uh, paycheck come through. Yeah, but um, it went, my portfolio was tanking a bit, uh, a lot actually, and I was sweating it, um, but then it recovered. I don't know, the market The market went through a massive downfall over the weekend, of, at the end of last week. It was it was a more of a widespread one as well. It wasn't just yeah, the crypto yeah, driving the portfolio. Everything it, was, was, it was everything was having a bit of a yeah. bit of a wobble, so. so I was sweating it, but then at the same time, I was still buying. So um, I think I, that's when I when I was buying. I I think I think exactly. actually the timing was perfect because it was exactly the same time I was getting my paycheck in. Yeah. So market goes down, paycheck comes in, money goes into market. So mm. it was it was perfect all good. time. Yeah, exactly what you want. It's exactly, it's exactly <laughs> yeah, the way exactly. to do it. Yeah. So um, we'll get into a bit more detail on the portfolios in a bit, but it's it's that time we've rolled around to a new month. We're both looking at what we're going to be buying. So. Um, there's, there is a quick topic I sort of want to cover before we go into depths on the portfolio. Because um, personally, I know we've spoken about we're going to do a video of Tesla and it was supposed to be on Monday. It's now next Monday. Apologies. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, the, my, my personal opinion is obviously Tesla's already a bubble and we'll get into that when we do that video. But I personally look at stocks that feed into the electric car market as what i would call a tier one ev stock i.e anything that would feed into making an electric vehicle so mining stocks looking at companies that mine mm -hmm. lithium and one particular segment i want to start looking at and want to get more involvement with is ev charging points okay so cool if you look at the ev market as a whole obviously electric vehicle sales are climbing they will continue to climb because ev is going to be the future unfortunately until hydrogen technology sort of catches up with things um so they have to have the infrastructure in place yeah and obviously to all, in order to support all these electric vehicles in a row and i think it's one of the areas that the stock market's kind of being slept on at the moment because everybody's hyping up the electrical vehicle stocks yeah I personally wouldn't be buying Tesla because I think it's overvalued for what it is. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be buying any of the other automotive manufacturers because on an underlying level, they're all having to go through massive fundamental organizational changes in order to make themselves ready for electric vehicles. So, yeah, I, I, I hear where you're coming from, but for the same argument could be made because the comp these tier one EV uh, companies that you're talking about are kind of reliant on these electrical vehicle companies to succeed, right? They, they will both well, need each other. So, 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 yeah, you are you are exactly right there. But what what happens is that the EV market, in terms of selling electric vehicles, will succeed full stop because that is the way the future is going. Obviously, yeah. all the laws and regulations coming in and banning the sales of internal combustion engines and and everything that's going on. It's a global thing. So EVs are coming. That there is no yeah. two ways about that. EVs are coming. The problems that a lot of these original automotive manufacturers have is they're having to completely shift their mindset from their big technical aspect of looking at building engines, which have thousands of parts and thousands of components, to fundamentally stripping down what they do, simplifying what they do, because batteries yeah. and electric motors are no way near as complex, and almost restructuring the company from being an automotive manufacturer to a technology company. Mm -hmm looking mm -hmm. at data, looking at how they integrate cars into the, into the internet of things and how they're managing the data and making the car more efficient and providing good infotainment systems. And that's something Tesla's been market leading in for the yeah. moment. And they, they yeah. are fantastic. And that's the way they're going to go. So all these original automotive companies are having to play catch up with, yeah. with Tesla. 
Tesla's the market leader, but Tesla's overpriced, so I wouldn't invest in it. As I said, I think they're fantastic, but it's just overpriced for me yeah. for me to invest in. All these automotive companies that are having to go through structure trades, it's going to cost them a lot of money. There's new companies coming into the market competing with them. Nikola, Apple's yeah. getting into EV markets. So this is a huge competition space, and I don't think all of these automotive companies will survive this change. It's going to cost them billions and billions and billions of pounds to do it, and some of them won't make it. Yeah, and you'll have new players coming into the game. So if you know what you're looking at, then maybe you say, "All right, right okay, I think these comp- these automotive companies are going to succeed, and we'll do better than other ones and survive the change." These new up and coming peoples like Nestle and Polar and all of these uh, other automotive manufacturers are going to do well and succeed. They're going to compete with these OEMs and take a huge market share. Those are your growth in terms of automotive shares, but it's yeah, just yeah. too risky, if you know what I mean, for me. I say risky, obviously. There's risky risky for, for the for the for these tier ones that you're suggesting or not, so not tier one but in that sector there's a lot of competition, okay. there's a lot of noise and I don't know what's going on. Whereas oh, tier yeah, one charging stations are gonna to have to come in. There's gonna be companies and yes, there's gonna be competition, but the whole sector's gonna grow. It's not a shift from ICE to E V vehicles. It mm. is we are making charging points, so the whole sector is a thing should see massive growth going forward. Same with lithium mine, exactly the same thing. You're, you've yeah, got an average yeah. of seven kilos of lithium in a normal EV vehicle's battery pack. You put an extra 200 million vehicles on the road, all with lithium. That's a heck of a lot of lithium that's got to come out of the ground and be mined. Yeah. So that's sort of my mindset of looking into it's going, that thing is going to be growth. It's not trying to transition from one thing to another. Exactly the same with BP or um, Shell companies like that. They've got to transition yeah. from oil to providing energy in a green fashion that is a monumental shift that's going to cost them a lot of money yeah so that's sort of my mindset on it um but what i've done over the over the just the course of 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 this week is i've just been looking around at some of some of the stocks that we could potentially have a look into and what i'm hoping we can try and do is over the course of this month is each of the companies i'll go through here we'll do a more in-depth stock review on it so what i'm trying to do is just view the whole charging point sector as a whole what companies are out there what companies on offer we'll review each stock and then use that to guide my decision of one if i believe it's a good investment then i'll invest into the sector but two which of the companies in this sector should i pick and invest into yeah now this is a a slight change from my normal portfolio strategy of dividend investing because these companies most of them are fairly new they're fresh green behind the ears some of the articles i'll show on here are literally one day old in terms of stock market flotations and stuff like that so they are incredibly green they're companies that aren't paying dividends and they are companies that are losing money at the moment because they're still developing themselves so it it is a a transition into a growth stock for me which is new but i feel like having that extra risk exposure especially while young is, is sort of useful so, how did you how did you come across these companies? You just just a bit of research, seeing what was out there, okay. looking at communications that had come out, particular articles. Sometimes it's as simple as googling charging point stocks. Okay, <laughs> literally so, as simple yeah. as that, and read some articles that pop up and have a look. And, yeah, and look into them. No, I I ask because sometimes I I I'm lost with thought ideas of who else to because a lot of the things a lot of the people that I've invested in are people that are, I already people companies I already know of. Except, and I, I stray away from companies that I haven't heard of before, but it's important to, as you say, Google, do the research, learn about these new companies. Well, there this, might be... this is it, though. There's, there's your blue yeah. chip brands, the ones you see every day, but there's a lot of companies. And this is one thing I learned very early on. It's good, good to see you're learning it as well, is that there's a lot of big, big companies that live underneath the surface that you never see, that you've never yeah, even heard yeah. of because they deliver services to big corporations and they do billions of pounds in revenue a year and you and i wouldn't know what they are as retail people because we'd never have any involvement with them but these companies are turning money over hand over fist and they're amazing investment yeah. opportunities and until you start looking into them and seeing what they do and understanding what they do you realize oh hang on there is more to to companies than just what you see from the company you're in and what you see yeah. on the consumer discretionary level the stock market isn't just made up of coca-cola and tesla <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> yeah exactly so the, 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 there's a couple of companies on here. I haven't gone into them in any detail. We'll do those in separate episodes and we'll link those episodes to this video. Um, so if you're interested in seeing the actual stock reviews on any of these companies as we go through, then pop the subscribe button down below and um, they should be coming in the next month or so. 
um, and hopefully yeah as i said they'll they'll guide the investment strategy so blink is um one of the biggest players in the game at the moment they've got a huge presence in los angeles obviously los angeles is, is ahead of the curve in terms of getting a number of ev vehicles in america um mm -hmm. they have a, a company strategy of one delivering charging points um, but they offer them in sort of three packages. One, you can buy the charging point outright and then you run it and collect the money from people using it, obviously, okay, charging cool. a vehicle. Two is sort of a 50-50 profit split. So you they they lease the charging point out and then you get they get some of the revenue and they get obviously half payment. And then the other one is then they own the charging point outright themselves, Blink as a company, and then they just collect the revenue from it. Mm -hmm. So that's, mm -hmm. that's one interesting thing. I like that. Another one I'm looking at is called Charge Point. They literally just floated under is it this newborn acquisition company, I believe. That's they're fairly fresh onto the market. Um, again, it's a similar sort of thing. They go on about EV charging points, fleets of vehicles, exactly the same concept. Now, one of the other companies I'm looking at is also called Pod Point. Now, Pod Point isn't floated on the market yet. But this article, as of 18th of January, is that it says that EDF are possibly looking to float them on the market at some point. So that's doing an initial public offering of the company. I think it would value nice. it at about £100 million pounds or $100 million, I think they said. I can't remember whether it was pounds or dollars. So again, given that that's something that might be coming forward, might be something I'd buy at IPO, uh, the initial public offering, rather than buying... Um, a company that's already floated on the market so that's another one mm -hmm. i'm considering all depends on when the ipo happens and what i look at what's going on underneath the hood of each of these companies and go right what products are they offering what's their business model you, you did invest with monzo at an ipo stage right or no so monzo i own uh, i think it's about 50 shares and i think i paid 300 and something god pounds for and okay. Monzo wasn't an IPO. Monzo was what was called a crowdfunding or seeding round. So right. it's pre-public offering. So you offer the, you essentially give the company money for them to be able to build themselves and grow the company with, in return for shares. But those shares aren't publicly traded. Okay. You couldn't mm -hmm. go onto your eToro account and go and buy some Monzo mm -hmm. shares. I've so got them, but I can't do anything with them. So you did not buy them through uh, HL, through Hargis? No, no. So okay. Mo Monzo's, Monzo's was actually a, a quite a seamless way of buying them, to be fair. It wasn't through like a crowdfunding website or something. Yes, it was done through a, a secondary sort of a source, but you could actually do it directly through the Monzo app itself. Okay, nice. And I remember at the time when I bought them, I was I was at university with some of the other apprentices on, on the apprenticeship program and that. And there's obviously, it, being, being a younger environment, there's quite a lot of people that are into Monzo and like the company and like what they do. And there was this whole hum and about 11 o'clock when the shares came online, all of a sudden, nobody was paying attention in the lecture. Everybody was on their phones buying Monzo shares. And it was like, right, how many of you bought? Oh, I bought 10. How many of you bought? Oh, I bought 100. And it was, and that was, it was the whole thing. And the lecture just looking like, what the hell's going on? And it's like, yeah, we're all trading. Don't worry about it. Buying Monzo. <laughs> Busy buying, buying stonks. Yeah, I like that. Um, but anyway, yeah. So so uh, this pod point is an interesting one that, that I want to watch the IPO and I just see what goes on with it. Another company is Nerve. Now, Nerve's a bit different. That looks a bit like a Tesla logo. It, yeah. yeah. You, right? Well, it is a because, as I said, Tesla are the market leader, so Tesla's going to okay. copy everyone. It's like when you see these memes online of, oh, Mercedes has copied the interior of Tesla. Well, they have. <laughs> they have because Tesla's so far ahead. Everybody's like, right, let's look at what Tesla does and then try and make it a little bit better. But... We'll influence it heavily on that, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, so that, is, that is exactly it. Now, Nerve, what Nerve do is they're not necessarily just offering charging points. They're offering what, what you might label as a green solution. Okay. So they're classing it as vehicle to grid innovation. And essentially what they're trying to do is link the electric vehicles as a stabilizer for the energy grid now i'm gonna to have to give you a bit of technical technical here so essentially what happens is is when you're putting in um, wind farms and solar panels onto your national grid you're adding a lot of instability to your grid now yeah. what that basically means is that the sun's not always shining the same brightness there's cloud cover there's night time obviously um the wind isn't always going to blow at the same speed. It's going to fluctuate and therefore your 
average energy being provided to the grid is going to be oscillating and changing all the time and it causes problems it causes something called the duck effect on the grid and that's to do with solar panels and what what happens is is that in order to be able to keep a steady baseline to keep up with demand you need you're going to have to have some form of energy storage now say the pumped hydro or hydroelectric dams um, or battery storage on the grid now building battery storage is one thing tesla's done um, Elon yeah. Musk, I don't know if you saw back in um, the Western Australian province, they were having massive problems with power cuts and Elon Musk had a bet with the, the local government and says, like, in 100 days, I'll install a battery storage facility in your area, 100 megawatts, and it'll get rid of energy problems. And he did it in like 69 days, minutes, whatever it was, because he's Elon Musk. Now, what this company is trying to do, what Nerve's trying to do effectively, is use your electric vehicle as the grid stabiliser. So when you're how, how would how would it stabilize the grid? Yeah, so effectively, what 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 happens is is that the the you've got instability on the grid. So if you're producing too much electricity from renewable sources, you can use that to store energy in your car's battery effectively. And if the grid's running low on energy, it could pull pull electricity from your car, which you're not using, that's just sitting there on charge, and f meet that demand gap on the grid and provide the stability you need. So rather than doing big battery installations on the grid like Tesla's doing, you could effectively use the infrastructure you've got anyway, use the yeah. vehicles you're not using on the road to provide that stability to the grid. I know there's another another way that governments are looking at doing it, which is when vehicles reach their end of life on the road, they effectively, because scrapping off a lithium battery is quite difficult. There are mm -hmm. companies that do it. There's definitely companies out there that do it. And that's potentially another growth set you're looking at rather than looking at tier one. Let's look at the end of life for electric vehicles. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe five years time. We look at the end of life of electric vehicles. You go, right. Okay. There's going to be loads of electric vehicles on the market. How are we recycling them? How are we regenerating the batteries? And one of the ways the government's looking at reusing those batteries is sticking them in a warehouse somewhere and using them as the grid stability. Okay, okay. they might only be 80% as good as they were before because they've lost a lot of their life, but so they might not be applicable for use in an electric vehicle, but they could as be used to stabilize the vehicle. Yeah. yeah, so they wouldn't be as good, but they'd still work. Yeah, that's yeah. Really okay, that's a really interesting idea, actually. Yeah. So the, the, this this is all the things that you look at. It would try in a, an an initiative an initiative mindset. Yeah. I struggled with that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, to try and look at what what's going to happen, what's what's changing in the market. And obviously, I like that you're not just targeting the. It's obvious that EV is going to be next, but actually the companies that would also benefit from evs uh growing yeah it's, it's a really it's, interesting it's way the whole things. ecosystem around yeah, the yeah. market it's not just oh we're going to be building electric cars let's buy tesla yeah. shares it's there's a lot more that's got to go in behind the backgrounds exactly the same renewable energy companies again is another one i'm interested in i own a, a shares in, in trig the renewable investment group because yeah it's the way it's going but and that energy has got to fuel it but then you look at exactly the same thing is now you're transitioning to all electric vehicles Therefore, your electric, your energy demand that you would normally fill with petrol and oil for electric vehicles is going to shift to electricity. Yeah. So you need to generate more electricity, but not only are you trying to generate more electricity, you're trying to generate it in a renewable fashion. So yeah. your energy growth and your national grid requirements are going to go through the roof. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot, lot to go on with the ecosystem. Um. Final one then, I need is plug power. Now, these guys work more with, I think they do 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 stuff to do with charging points, but they're also exploring a lot more into hydrogen technology. Now, hydrogen... This Very might, early days for hydrogen. Yeah, so. exactly. So hydrogen, looking at what's happening with automotive manufacturers and what, what we hear going around is hydrogen will come into the equation at some point. It might become a hybrid vehicle technology where you have a combination of both electric and a hydrogen generator inside of it to get the best yeah. of both worlds. So you don't have to spend half an hour recharging. You can just fill up with a bit of hydrogen. It's still clean. And then your electric motor delivers to more efficient or higher efficiency than you would get from an internal combustion engine. You get like 90 to 95% efficiency from an electric motor where an internal mm -hmm. combustion engine, only about 30% of the energy actually goes into pushing the vehicle forward. Mm -hmm. so um so yeah so what i've done is i've added each of those those shares to my watch list as you can see they're all nice. sort of running a similar trend they've had a have had a run up and now they're on the way back down again so very similar trends <laughs> yeah so this is well this is exactly it is are people looking at 
looking at these stocks of individual stocks or is there something maybe an etf out there as well that's buying up all stocks like this so you get a, a broad exposure to the whole charging point market which is going to grow so this is where i'm on about buying into um by buying the companies through an ETF enables you to buy a small piece of each of these companies so you're exposed to the whole market and you get to capture the growth with less risk because you're diversified across all the companies. Mm-hmm. Whereas potentially what I might try and do is by looking through each of these stocks and doing the stock reviews that we're going to do on these, pick out which ones of these I think are going to outperform the other ones and try and capture even more. Okay, but so the the the, the, the way that you're going to go at it is a bit more riskier, right? The ETF is a more safer option, wouldn't yeah. it be? Yeah, that's yeah. exactly it. So if, if you're less familiar with the market and you don't want to do the research and do your stocks 100%, if there is yeah. an ETF out there, I will have a look for one and we'll, mm-hmm. we'll, have, we'll have a look at it as well as part of this. Um, an ETF and would be a much yeah. safer route of doing this. Now that you mentioned that, there was there was actually a guy not for from eToro today that they made an EV copy portfolio, um, yeah. which I'm pretty sure is just for the EV companies like Nikola and Tesla. But yeah, I think I think an ETF on that would be really interesting. Yeah, exactly. It. Um, but yeah, so that that's sort of my mindset of where I'm going to be putting this month's potentially putting this month's investments. If I look into each of these companies and I go, no, 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 <laughs> then all of a sudden I need to change my strategy and I need to put the money elsewhere. In which case, I'll probably pick one of the one of the safe stocks I've already got and just plow a load more money into it. So, but it's a strategy that's paid off for me previously um, because I bought shares in Cecilia Dad. Um, they're a lithium mining company and they're my best stock performance with the exception of bitcoin in terms of raw stock performance they're 80 90 percent up from wow okay them, that's really good just from buying into a company that mines lithium so that, nice. that's sort of my mindset on it do you reckon it's still early days for investing in companies that are mining lithium um there's potential the one thing i did note when i looked into them was that they had there's a lot of stock of lithium in the market the, mm-hmm. these mining companies were went a bit ott when they heard about electric vehicles and they they oh, okay. scaled at their operation to such an extent they started seriously crashing the price of lithium down which was great for the companies trying to build electric vehicles because they could buy yeah. cheap on the market and drive the price of their vehicles down but it was poor for them because there was so much stock on the market they were just weren't making the same revenue yeah. as they were making so they what happened was that all the these big lithium miners came together i think it's abby moore Cecilia dad a couple of companies in china and a couple more in australia they came together in one form and went no we're going to limit how much we're producing to or how much we're going to grow the our mining operations for the x number of years so that the price yeah. becomes stabilized and we can keep producing good revenue yeah that makes um, sense but that's an, again that's a, that's a whole other topic we can cover in another episode so there's one to look forward to um should we get into your portfolio then portfolio time portfolio time indeed um so yeah uh more money in uh not profits not as spicy as uh is it the same amount you've been putting in before is it you put yeah in? still i don't like the number but it is 666 pounds <laughs> you say, you say <laughs> it's the devil's work <laughs> but it's still the thing is it's a good it's a still a very very good number it's a bit of 24 yeah. and that much money uh, the so, portfolio is going to put you off really well as long as you keep it up it'll be great yeah i mean yeah i, I, I just want to clarify it's not because i i like the devil is the reason why it's 666 666 because it's two-thirds of a thousand and a third is going into the lifetime <laughs> i said and the two-thirds is going into the portfolio yeah. that's why it's 666 yeah, <laughs> um but yeah so if i saw let me sort by uh so, so you've put 666 in this month. Have you made yeah, any purchases I, yet? Or are you still... Yeah, yeah, I've made, um, I, I, yeah, from that 666 pounds, I only have $90 left. So I've... I, I've flipping it, you've gone in already. Yeah, I've already gone in. I saw the market go down. I was like, if, if there's any time to actually invest, uh, mm-hmm. it, it should be now. Um, so Bitcoin, I bought a bit more. I bought 150 pounds more. I went down... When it came in, it was around... 56,000 it went down to 47 so i bought in at 48 49 50 okay. which is all right that's, that's okay yeah it's okay um easy jet been doing really well um connect 33 percent yeah so that that's doing really, and I'm, I'm still thinking about putting a little bit more into it um but we'll see how that goes um 
Disney also doing me really well as well as continuing to rise up. Um, uh, I remember I was arguing two weeks ago, three weeks ago, that it was hitting 190 and it crashed back down, or crashed back down, went back down to 185 after the the release of um, its uh, its uh, results uh, for the quarter. But uh, that, that's now 195. <clears throat> yeah. So my copiers, they were doing really well before the crash, and then the crash happened, and they they got pretty screwed. Uh, so nothing. They were both in the red a uh, couple of days. So ago. you're actually outperforming your copiers then. Yeah, at quite the moment, substantially I as well. <laughs> but I think a lot, a lot of it is. I feel it, it, it's a bit, it's a bit down to luck. I'm, I don't know. Um, well, you're, yeah, you're the, what? You're what? You're five percent up on your whole portfolio, and they're only half so, a percent. So you're you're ten times better than the people you're copying. Yeah, I'm I'm currently four percent up in in March. Let's go. Um, uh, Rolls Royce also g- getting on the hype of the vaccine is here. We're all gonna be saved. Time to get back onto planes. Cineworld, <laughs> you bought some. <laughs> I bought some. He's out performing I, I just... me on Cineworld. Because <laughs> <laughs> I bought it at the right time, right? Hey, let's go. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and and half of that it's only it's only fifty dollars, um, but mo- mostly because EasyJet is that coronavirus stock, and that's been doing so well for me. And I know like cinemas are not going to be as popular as they, as they used to be. I mean, we've got Netflix and that lot, them lot, but I think mm-hmm. cinemas always going to be around. I don't think. I mean, I I had Netflix, you know, before before the pandemic, and. I still wanted to go to this one and watch movies. Yeah, uh, this 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 was, this was my mindset. I had exactly the same mindset when I very first bought Cineworld because it, you you and I and our other mates, we've always still gone to the cinema and we've always still enjoyed it. And there is just something different about it, having the yeah. proper sound experience and the big screen. is it, It's just not the same as chilling in bed with a sore back watching Netflix marathons, <laughs> if you know what I mean. It's, it's not quite the same. I think it is still an experience. Yeah, it's overpriced, but you pay for that environment well, yeah and you say it's it's overpriced because you get the premium of uh watching it before the streaming services get them and disney disney plus have kind of already uh they've went they're planning on when they release a movie to put it onto the streaming service mm-hmm. but they're also asking for a premium so when Mo- yeah. when the new moulin movie came out you had to have the subscription already and you had to pay another twenty dollars to, to oh, watch on the top movie. of your subscription. On top of the Flipping subscription. It, right? I wasn't aware of that. That's ridiculous. So, so I think I would rather take my mates to the to the cinema yeah, yeah, yeah. and watch it with them than pay twenty dollars to watch it at home mm. on on Disney Plus. So. Grab yourself a Tango Ice Blast. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Tango Ice Blast, oh, no. man. <sighs> Somebody okay. make a killing during lockdown if they were doing those on delivery. <laughs> oh, I really want to get a Tango Ice Blast. I'm being thirsty. Um, Okay, and now now the reds. Uh, so uh, last one was Apple. Apple, a bit of both. Safe, it's a safe uh, stock investment, um, and also their um, break into the EV market also gave you a bit more yeah. uh, motivation to to buy into them. Yeah. And then GSK. So we spoke about that the other yeah, bought some the video. The that way. Way. I've bought even got some. the finger going the right way as well. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. So GSK up there, and yeah, ever found it's a good time to buy in. Coca Cola has been going sideways for the last two months. It's, <laughs> but Coca Cola is one of the king of dividends, though. They they, they, yeah. they produce you four percent dividend or three. I don't know what it is at the moment. What the yield is like three three and a half percent. You just sit on them for forever. Yeah. So it's it's one of those yeah, stocks three, that you three, just three. you just sort of watch gradually grow in your portfolio, and then yeah. you call yourself Warren Buffett and be done with it. <laughs> I didn't know it was a Warren Buffett uh, stock before I bought it. So, but... so War- no, Warren Buffett owns a considerable portion of, of Coca Cola, and I think his, okay. his his his. I remember seeing articles in the past, and they're probably slightly dated now. But his dividend payout from Coca Cola is something like four hundred million a year. Is how much he gets just in dividends. From That's him. a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> because he That's bought it at the right time, money. he knew what he was doing. Yeah. So. That's amazing. Mm. Um, AstraZeneca is a controversial one. Okay. Uh, a lot of lot of lot, lot of chat on the on the on the news about the vaccine not doing so well, uh, especially compared to uh, Pfizer's and whatnot. But uh, I, it's gone down a lot from what it was, and I don't think the issues that it has justifies the price that it's at currently. 
Okay. Uh, AstraZeneca is a massive pharmaceutical company with loads of medicines, loads of different um, treatments. I, I, I was just like, I put aside another hundred dollars for them. Do you think that the AstraZeneca, now I don't know because I haven't looked into it, but do you think the AstraZeneca share price has been impacted with this whole Europe being a bit sketchy on the AstraZeneca COVID vaccine? Yeah. So they restricted yeah. it to people over under people under 65 could get it and they wouldn't let anybody old have it. Yeah, that's that's exactly why the share price has gone down so much. And I, and I feel like the response to the sh share price because of that news is exaggerated and it should have I mean, I accept. I expected a dip, but not at what what it was dipping at. Hmm. Um, so yeah, I, that's the reason why I bought into it. Um, okay, we'll see how I it goes. Yeah, I think the key thing is though, is obviously you, we need to we need to get you doing that big background research. Obviously, so you're did... only putting small amounts at the moment, so it's yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you do need to get into doing the whole. I was looking at their financials, at least on this website, and the, their income from 2020 was just as good as 2019 which was an outperformer from the last four years. Right. So financially, they're doing very well still. Okay. Um, so I, yeah, I, I looked at this and I thought that, that I don't see any reason why mm. it's, it, it's doing a lot worse than it was before. Why should it be valued a lot less than it was? Because yeah. there's a slight issue with this particular, and I, and I think this is the main part. The news is so much more exaggerated than it is because coronavirus is all we're thinking about right now. And AstraZeneca is so much more than that. It's it, they've got their their hands are in a lot of different medicines. So mm. I feel like I I I might have gotten a, a good time when maybe after the virus leaves and AstraZeneca is like guys, we have a lot more medicines. Yeah, uh, yeah. and then it goes up again. <laughs> by the way, here's some of my other products. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, here's the other one hundred <laughs> products I offer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's an interesting one. Uh, and then so XRP and Ethereum both red because I forgot to get rid of stop losses. The, they're they're oh. all right. I, what happened was I was like getting massive gains from them. I put, I remember, I think we spoke about this in an episode about setting stop losses. I forgot to not, uh, <laughs> to get, get rid of stop losses. And then I got an notification saying, your stop loss has been met. I was like, shit. So I went back online, I bought again. Um, so really, these are breaking even with the profits that I had got when the stop loss triggered. Um, hang on, hang on. When, when you say so, stop loss triggered. Where where did you set your stop the, loss? So the, so uh, the I think the Ethereum one was stop lost at one thousand eight hundred. So was that was that still in profit your stop loss or was your oh stop yeah loss at, that was yeah. that I think that ended with a ten pound ten dollar profit. Right. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm minus $2 right now. So, okay. So you, so you had like, oh, I bought it, I bought it 1900 and set my stop loss at 1800. So you hadn't lost money. Essentially you just set a stop loss. Yeah. Right? Okay. okay. Yeah. No, yeah. That's, yeah, that's yeah. fair enough. That's fair enough. Um, so, and then the XRP, let's not talk about that. That's only $25. Um, I'm still wait. I, I, I don't know what the fuck is going to happen with that one, to be honest. <laughs> um, uh, and then actually the, the biggest loser that I have is Tesla. Um, hmm. uh, Rocket at a nice 688 uh, with my average buying of 860. So even more reason to do this video for Jack. It will be coming <laughs> one day. It will be coming. That's that's a big yeah. promise between us and you guys. So, <laughs> so yeah, it seems it seems to have found like its support from before this crazy spike over here. Yeah. Um, I, I I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna go lower again because actually the the bull the bull the bull run happened from down here so it might go back down to that i might be minus 50 percent but i'm holding i'm going to be holding it for the next five ten years so yeah, it's, it's 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 vibing there in my in my portfolio yeah so you, you essentially loaded 666 into your into your tommy when it went full machine gun far as <laughs> yeah, I every stock well, on the market <laughs> so i i showed you i think i showed you before my two buy watch list that i just went through and i went like yeah, yeah. i want this I yeah want that, i want, I want that. that yeah i, I want that, that. And it was a red market for everybody, so I was just like, if there's a time to buy it, it's nice. It's now. So. Mix. I think what, mix. What, what we'll have to cover when we do the update next week then is we'll have to do a, a quick cover on, on diversification of portfolios because we'll have to look at how many stocks you've got in there and, and at what point do you say, right, I've got enough stocks and I'm happy with the stocks I've got and I stop going full Tommy gun and, and buying everything on the market. I 100% I, I agree with you, yeah. And I, and I was asking myself that same question when I said, 
should I be putting more money into EasyJet? I still think it's going to have a lot more. But yeah, I think it's a bit early now. But I think the thing is, the, that question is a, a bit more complicated for me because of my copy portfolios, because that's another whole portfolio that these guys are maintaining <laughs> that I am benefiting from. Yeah. So I, I'm, I don't know where the balance, what that means for my balance. Some tidying up to do at some point. <laughs> for sure. Anyway. Let's, let's uh, see yours. Let's roll into mine. I'm, I'm slightly up on last week. I haven't put any money. Well, that's a lot. Okay, I've put some money into the account, but it won't be shown on here yet because I don't actually show cash balances on this portfolio yet. It's something I think okay. we discussed that I might change at some point. Um, but I'm slightly back up now because of the Bitcoin price yeah. mini recovery and the stock recovery that's been going on. Um, we mentioned before about the... You don't want that there. Uh, mentioned before about... Where are they? So Ciudad Mining Group doing really well with those. Um, those stocks have been flying from there. My recovery stocks, the ones I bought way back during the pandemic crash. So was a company I've got and I want to do an episode on at some point called New River Residential. And what New River Residential are is they're a, a REIT stock. A what? Um, REIT. What's that? I can't we've covered it. So a REIT is a... Um, uh, it's a residential investment trust, effectively equity trust. So what they do is they buy property. Okay. They buy a property and then they rent out the property and then you get yeah. a share of it. So it's effectively they're a, a landlord company mm -hmm. and you get a share in the profits of it. Now that doesn't just mean they buy up people's houses. Um, I've got New River Residential. They buy up shopping shops, corner shops, rent them out to shops. They've got uh, and pub chains as well. They rent out pub Ooh. properties. Okay. Um, I've got another one here called LTC Properties that deal with um, residential homes and care homes for people over in the state. Um, I've then got Realty Income Corp. That's another REIT that's in the States. Again, they do the same thing. They rent out malls and shops over in the States. Nice. Now, new resident, residential, obviously, all the shops were shut during the COVID pandemic and their share price tumbled from something like mm -hmm. 200 pence a share down to like 60 pence a share. Wow. Um, uh, it might have been slightly lower than that at one point. And I bought in at 60 pence a share because I went through it exactly as we've done before with these stock reviews. I went through their um, quarterly earnings a couple of a couple of quarters in a row, actually. And I looked at them and they were still pulling 80% of their rental income from where they were. And they've got a very diverse portfolio. They haven't got more than 5% of stores being rented out by one company. Um, I think their biggest ones is, is Tesco, B and M, and Poundland are their biggest ones. But that those top yeah. three make up only about I think eight percent of their rental income. Okay. Um, but essentially, they had good cash reserves. They were still pulling in money. So yeah, they scrapped off their dividend, but they were doing quite well. And mm -hmm. even if it gets to the stage where they're only paying out a quarter of the dividend they were paying out during well pre pandemic levels, I'm still pulling a seven percent dividend. And even now for the price levels I've bought at, they're now up at 103 pence a share. Um, and I'm, I've made 67% gains since March. Nice. Wow. Ridiculous. So I'm intending to hold those out going forward because I do believe they will start kicking out back and there's proposed, there's rumors they might start repaying their dividend around May time this year, in which case if they do, even if it is a quarter of it was, it's a 7% dividend pay. It's far above my 4%. I got them at a discount. I've made good gains on them. So That's yeah. epic. It's, it's a good one I'm looking in for. Um, another one I've done very well on the bought during the dip, Legal in General. Um, yeah. Interestingly, Legal in General actually hold shares in some of these um, EV companies that we, we discussed at the start of the episode. Okay. Um, so I technically already have a very small amount of exposure to them. Um, but Legal in General was a great one. Legal in General I actually did a, did a flip during the very, very bottom of the dip and made like 38% in three days, I think it was. And then the price came back down again. I bought even more, but held it this time just to keep, <laughs> just, just to keep it strong. Didn't right? So I've done, done incredibly well on this. So yeah, it's been a, it's been a decent one. I think the st if you take the Bitcoin out of equation, the stock portfolio is up about 2% from what it said on Hargreaves that when you include the trading I've done on it and the dividends I've been paid for it, it's more like 6 or 7%. Nice. I've started awesome. doing it at the end of last year, so I'm, I'm holding holding above the market, which is all good. So just keep it up. Um, dividend payouts have all been done for February now. Total dividend income, £30.81. Dinky month, unfortunately. It's it, January and February are my smallest dividend months. 
Um, uh, I'm excited to see yes. the March ones. Gas, though, gas for the gonna... March ones. I think I think I I think I worked out. It's supposed to be something like 120, 130 pounds for for March. Okay, nice. Which again is still a, a it's a smaller month once you get into the September June months. Those months get big. You're talking two or three hundred pounds in dividends. Wow. Month, which okay. Is, which cool. Is great. So it pays for your, <laughs> pays for your fuel for the year or or whatever else you're gonna. Oh, so are you are you pocketing that money? Are you putting that money back into your? No, I reinvested. So you're reinvesting it. I, I take I take my income. I take twelve hundred pounds out. I put it straight onto the account. All the dividend income you've got. What what most brokers offer is they offer you a, a reinvestment strategy. So what you can do is you can either have the dividends come in and go straight back out and buy the same shares in the same company regardless of what the market price is, or you can have the money sit in a pot until it gets to a certain price level uh, until it gets to a certain amount and then go and buy shares in the company so okay, you're not I just like buying that. like small amounts yeah. or you do what i do and you say don't invest the money for me keep the money off the one side i'll pull it back into my account and, and i will invest it in what i want to invest it into mm-hmm. so what generally happens is, is most of the dividend at the moment i used to pay the hargreaves fees when i'm trading and buy extra stock so i say i'll put in 1200 quid I might actually buy 13, 1400 quid in the stock because I've got dividend pay there, but yeah. 1200 is only the money I've put in. So I use that money to buy a few extra shares and whatever I'm going to buy in. Um, so all of that money goes back into portfolio. And that's one of the important parts of compounding interest is you are taking the interest and you're reinvesting it back into the portfolio to earn you even more money. So, But yeah, I think that covers, covers most of my portfolio. Hopefully Bitcoin gets back on its grind. Yeah, I'm waiting for it to, to go back up to 60, 80. Yeah, so it's, it's done all right. It's holding around the 21 EMA at the moment. Yeah. It's looking healthy. It's doing what it should be doing. So away we go. Right, brilliant. Well, thank you very much for watching. Very much appreciated. If you are new around here, hit the subscribe button. Again, thank you very much for all that traction on the GSK video. It's on like 400 and something gold yeah, views. Yeah, that's crazy. YouTube algorithm turned on the gas. Burn, so <laughs> appreciate it. Um, so yeah, I, I did a lot of praying to the YouTube gods and they answered my <laughs> prayers. You, you hit up Susan, Bush, 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 whatever her last name is, and we're like, yo. <laughs> need some yo traction. Girl, I, we need some traction out here. <laughs> um, it's all down to you guys, so thank you for that. Um, yeah. yeah. So thank you very much for watching. Appreciate it. Bye. See ya.